Now this episode will upset a lot of people who base everything on experience and emotion and yet hate the truth. I learned uh, that seeing something is far more powerful than reading something, reading about something. Did you hear what I just said? Jesus asked Matthew for his opinion on his teaching that he's about to do. And Jesus admits that he was wrong and supposedly changes his approach. <laughs> said no verse ever. Welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's word. And before we get started today, please consider subscribing to our channel, giving this a thumbs up, and supporting what we do by going to realtalkwithjordan.com. On today's episode, we're going to look at some new reasons why you should avoid the chosen. And these are very serious reasons, by the way. Now, this episode will upset a lot of people who base everything on experience and emotion and yet hate the truth. Now, people will say, but this show has led me to Christ and I feel so close to Jesus. Is it the biblical Jesus or is it a counterfeit Jesus? Now, please stay with me to the end because there's going to be a lot of facts that you need to see and hear. So are you ready? Let's go. The stories of Jesus we do agree on and we we love the same jesus um that's not something that you often hear sometimes it's like oh you uh, they that's believe a, in a different yeah, jesus than we do statement yeah no it's the same i mean i'll 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 sink or swim on that statement and i and it's controversial and i um i don't mind getting criticized at all for the show and i don't mind being called a blasphemer i don't like it when my friends are and um i've made it very clear that um, if I go down, if I go down, I'm going down swinging, protecting my friends and my, my brothers and sisters. And so I don't deny we have a lot of theological differences, but we, we love the same Jesus. Now, I know many of you have seen the clip that I just showed as it blew up huge in 2020. But wait until you see how Dallas Jenkins, who's the creator of The Chosen, the man was in that clip, he doubles down on this nonsense. And no, please be very, very clear that Christians and Mormons do not love the same Jesus. Christians love the biblical Jesus. Mormons hate the God of the Bible. Watch this. Let's just start with the, the, the central question. Is it true that I said, um, which is what you've seen in some headlines or seen in some, some, uh, some titles of videos, Dallas Jenkins says, quote, and then it'll say Mormons or LDS, whatever term that they want to use. Mormons and evangelicals love the same Jesus or LDS are Christians. Is it true that I said that? And the answer is no, um, I did not. Uh, I'll just say, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a ride. I, and it, it all came out of my conversation with you. I said that you, um, that, that many LDS folks and I uh, love the same Jesus. Uh, I still believe that. Um, it's gotten me in a lot of trouble, but I still believe that. And I'm not, I, I have a bit of a superpower in that I don't really care if, <laughs> if, if, if something that I say that I passionately believe is, is uh, criticized. So can we at least admit that Dallas Jenkins lied? That should automatically give us some pause as he clearly does not walk in any sort of integrity. And he claims that Mormons are our brothers and sisters in Christ and that we love the same Jesus. No, we do not. But let's keep going. I want to set the scene more before getting into how bad The Chosen really is. The Chosen is the largest crowdfunded TV show to date. The Bible is complicated and sometimes hard to understand, but watching The Chosen has really broken down Jesus and truly who he is. Made the Bible so alive. People know that God is telling this story and we're just trying to find it. I learned from that chosen, I watched them the other night. I learned uh, that seeing something is far more powerful than reading something, reading about something. So the chosen is easy to watch and it's better than reading God's word. <laughs> what? No. Are you kidding me? spoken by people who don't even know God's word. Let's be very clear. Luke chapter 6, verse 26 says this, Woe to you when all men speak well of you, 
for their fathers used to treat the false prophets in the same way. So let's be very clear here. So when the world loves you, you can be sure that God is not for you. And I wanna make it very crystal clear, you guys, the world loves this show. It's so easy, it's palatable. It just makes Jesus so personable and nice and friendly and loving. That's because it's a false Jesus. Oh, snap, you got me again. But let's go even deeper into the show and I wanna show you some more errors of the chosen. In this upcoming clip, Jesus asked Matthew for criticism and for his opinion. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Jesus asked Matthew for his opinion on his teaching that he's about to do. And Jesus admits that he was wrong and supposedly changes his approach. <laughs> said no verse ever. You are the salt of the earth. I'm worried that people near the back will hear salt the earth and it will immediately call to mind a negative connotation. I share your concern about the opening line. So this is Jesus and Matthew discussing his Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus himself is actually asking Matthew for criticism on one of his teachings. But I do agree with you. We shouldn't begin with salt. You make a valid point. Good work. Ah, he needed correction on that from Matthew, the apostle. Okay, at that point, you have a different Jesus. This is not the Jesus of the Bible, because this Jesus was going to start out his speech differently. And Jesus is like, oh yeah, what was I thinking, Matthew? We'll do it your way. I'm only God over here, by the way. What you have here is an ontological problem. You're misunderstanding the very nature of who Jesus is. And you can't rightly have a show about Jesus if you're not sure who he is or what he is. What you saw there was extremely unbiblical. According to Isaiah chapter 40, verse 13, that says that God takes counsel from no one. Not you, not me, not your grandma, not your pastor, not your favorite friend at school, no one. Also, what you just saw there was nowhere found in the Bible. And what you saw there was a false, wimpy, sissified Jesus. God does not need our opinion, not at all. And he does not ask any of us for feedback. Watch this. Nothing has the power that the word of God has. I think about that when I see this uh, film, The Chosen, I guess. Uh, I don't like that because some of it's biblical and some of it's not. And you can't make up the Bible story any way you want. Fidelity to the Bible is, is everything. Now, John MacArthur just nailed that thing right on the head. If you're going to make something about Jesus, you need to go to the Bible and not add or subtract from God's word. Because as you mix truth with error, not only are you creating a false Jesus, but you are confusing the people who are watching this show. Another error that I know many of you have heard about is the gay pride flag. But if you really peel back the onion layer, it is way worse than you thought, as Dallas and many of his cast members are actually LGBTQ supporters. And according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, and Romans chapter 1, verses 24 through 28, homosexuals will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So in essence, these people on The Chosen are supporting and endorsing sin. So we've talked about the pride flags on the set of The Chosen, but it got much worse when the actors in The Chosen decided to respond to the pride flags on set being noticed. When someone suggested boycotting The Chosen, the actor who plays Judas on the show jumped in and said, yeah, good luck with that. Happy Pride Month, y'all. Hashtag love is love. The actor who plays Thaddeus jumped in and dropped this tweet, which ended with a pride flag and a heart emoji. But the actor who plays Little James outdid them all by tweeting, my brother G. Cairo isn't the only one who stands by the LGBTQ members of the chosen family. Strong arm, pride flag, heart emoji. Get out of here with your hate, homophobia, and ignorance. Please hear me say this. Nowhere in the Bible are we to support sin. We're to speak the truth in love, Ephesians 4.15 says, and we're to call out sin, to call people to repent, to share the good news of the gospel and to preach the word. This is just more proof of how unbiblical this show is. Now let's add to the discussion the lead actor who plays Jesus. His name is Jonathan Rumi, and this guy is a train wreck. In fact, 
And I sat down and I prayed with him. Um, the, the, the space just to his right is empty. So I got to sit down or lie. At one point, I even lied down because I just thought it would be kind of interesting to try to connect in some way. That's probably more information than you need or may even want to publish. But that said, uh, I, you know, I, it's the, the truth. And so I finished praying with him. And I said, Lonnie, I want to honor you with this film. And I really want to, um, to, to, to bring justice and, and, you know, the testament to the gifts of God's grace and, and powers that you, you know, displayed while you were on this earth. And so if this is a good idea that I do this film, have somebody give me a sign, give me a sign, have God give me a sign. Mm -hmm. And the minute the words left my mouth, behind me, there was a door open to the cathedral and this giant chord rang out for about five seconds. And then from the organ, from the organ. Wow. Oh, I heard that. And I was like, okay, thanks for that. <laughs> so this man prays to the dead. You understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. He also asks dead people for a sign and he lays by the grave of dead people. How about no, no, and definitely not. He should have turned to Christ and ask the Lord for help because no dead person can help him, hear him, or give him a sign. But this should not be a surprise when you see what Jonathan Rumi has to say in this next clip, and it's crazy, by the way. We are charged to be the standard bearers who defend and preserve the dignity of every human, but especially the most vulnerable, which begins with the initial stages of life and continues throughout the entire cycle from conception through that phase we all aim to enter into our golden years, followed by the final stages of our earthly existence. How can you make a difference? Number one, pray the rosary. St. Padre Pio said the greatest weapon against the devil we have is the rosary. Wow. So the greatest weapon against the devil is to pray the rosary? Come on now, dog. Uh, no, absolutely not. So when you feel a demonic attack coming and you feel oppressed by the enemy, just go grab those beads and start praying the rosary. <laughs> no, absolutely not. That is so unbiblical, you guys. Where is that in God's word? I mean, that might be in like third opinions, chapter two, verse five, but it is not in God's word. Now, what did Jesus do when he was tempted by Satan? Look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. Did he pray the rosary? How about no? No, not at all. He used the word of God, and three different times he said, it is written, and he cited scripture. Now, I want to just get practical with you guys for a little bit and show you three errors that are in the chosen and how they are presenting a false Jesus. The first one is when Jesus gets ready to speak the Beatitudes, which can be found in Matthew chapter five in your Bibles, that happened on the Sermon on the Mount. Now, according to the chosen, he only spoke it to Matthew, and Jesus supposedly told Matthew to, to write it down. Eh, try again. So no, that did not happen. Second, Jesus later tells Matthew, that he is here to start a revolution. I'm here to start a revolution. What on earth? No, Jesus never said that. But Jesus did say in Matthew 20, verse 28, that he came to give his life as a ransom for many. And third, when Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman in John chapter four, according to the chosen, she says to Jesus, you're here to preach at me? And Jesus says, no. Wrong, that is absolute nonsense. Jesus did come to preach. That's what he did when he was there with the woman at the well. John chapter four, verses 39 through 42. I mean, do you see what's going on here? The chosen is giving the world a false and different Jesus. Now they'll say, oh, wait a second, we have creative license. No, you do not. You do not get to put words in the mouth of God Almighty that he did not say. And Paul made it clear in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, 
that we're not to tolerate anyone who preaches another Jesus. He watched this final episode of the first season and this brother realized that the show is poison. Colossians 2.8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Did you know, Christian friend, that your heart can be spoiled through philosophy and deceit? It's not like you went out to try to find a bad doctrine. The devil presented a false doctrine to you and it slowly started working its way into your heart. The Bible does talk about Christian liberty. It does, and I believe in that thoroughly. We watch a lot of things, don't we? You say, well, Logan, Jurassic 1 is popular, and you watch that. Jurassic Park is about dinosaurs eating people. Jurassic Park does not claim to be about Christ. It does not claim to be putting words in Christ's mouth. You find something that comes under the guise of religion or spiritual or faith, a faith-based film. You better make sure then it's actually scriptural. I want to make it very, very clear to each one of you guys today that I'm so sick and tired of people claiming that the chosen has led them to Christ and is doing so much for Christianity. No, it is not. It is distorting the gospel. It is distorting Jesus and it is leading people away from God's word. And let's be clear. There's only one person who loves to do everything that I just said, and that is Satan himself.